Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have questions, please give us a call, 559-656-0317. Send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Or, of course, you can always dial pound on your cell phone, 250. Use the keyword insurance. Get transferred to someone that can help you right away. I'm sort of laughing as I'm just thinking I'm giving you a 559 telephone number. And I remember when that would be a long-distance call. And I'd be thinking, do I want to call that number? It's a long-distance call. Now, not only do we not even pay attention to where, if it would be a long distance call or not, because there's no usual change in the cost to make that call, but we don't even know where these areas are. We could have someone that lives next door and they could have a phone number that starts with an area code that might be in a state that's, you know, across the country. It's just interesting how we've adjusted to the concept that it doesn't really make a difference to us where the phone number is or what the phone number represents, the city, state, whatever it is, we just call it. Maybe someday we'll get to a, play, a place where we don't actually have phone numbers, we just have names, something along those lines. Why do we need a number since, let's face it, most of us don't remember the phone number anyway. It's just in our cell phone. Okay, question time. Next question up is, how is your risk determined if you live in a community of standalone homes, townhomes, apartments, and community areas? I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, how your risk is determined. They're going to be looking at the location of your property, right? They're going to see where it is, how close is it to a fire hydrant, to a fire station? What is the likelihood of there being a fire? Is the road getting to that area relatively wide, easily accessible? Can a fire truck get up there, turn around, or is it up a tiny, narrow snake type of road that a fire truck could never get up to all sorts of things go into what insurance carriers will look at to try and decide on what the rates look like and they're going to look at that they're going to look at that regardless of if it's a single family home a town home an apartment or anything else hopefully that answers your question next question my state farm agent said they were not calling their new policies that they would be able to write a dic but rather a regular policy with a fire exclusion is there a reason that they're not willing to call it a DIC? And is there actually a difference as far as the risk goes? I have not heard this before, but I'm very curious to find out what that means. You have to call it something. You, they're, they're, every policy has a name, right? You're saying that they're calling it a regular home policy excluding fire. That's not really a product name. That sounds more of a, I don't know, salesy kind of thing to say. But what I do not know, because I do not represent State Farm, is I'm not sure if they do offer a DIC policy or, as I mentioned earlier today, a wraparound. My inclination is they would be offering a wraparound, a DIC policy, since I'm not even aware of a carrier that's actually offering a wraparound policy. I'm not sure why they would not want to call it a DIC. Uh, I'd love to know more about this. I'd love to hear more about it. I'm going to do a little bit of research from this. I, I thank you for bringing it to my attention because the little insurance nerd in me likes this stuff. I want to figure out what the deal is here. Next question. How do insurance agencies create their fire maps? I have a home in Carmel Valley. Uh, it is becoming uninsurable. My home's cost went from $6,000 to $9,000 to $12,000 in two years. The cost bloat is blamed on being in a fire zone. My primary home is also in a fire zone in the Bay Area but the insurance costs are a third as much. Friends have a home in the Bay Area, but the insurance costs a third as much. My friends have a home in Sonoma. The 2017 fire got within a mile of their house, but the insurance maps say they aren't in a fire zone, so their homeowners are reasonable. Who challenges the fire maps to ensure that they make sense and pricing is rational based on them? Lots of stuff there. I'm I mean, I'm frustrated for you because I understand where you're coming from. First, you're seeing high premium changes, and then you're seeing what seems like unreasonable pricing between different areas. As I mentioned earlier, there are no specific fire maps that are generic to every particular carrier in California. So to have one carrier decide that an area is in a fire area and another that would look in that same area and decide it's not happens all the time. The fact that you have friends that have homes that are costing more or less, there are so many different issues that could potentially go into the pricing of a home from the size of the home to the number of claims to what the exact address is. Is it at the top of the street? Is it at the bottom of the street? Is it backing up to a hill? And of course, what insurance company is it with? Because that makes a difference. You might have one policy with one company. Your next door neighbor literally might have Let's call it a track home. You guys have the same home. 
They might be exactly next door to you and be paying a different premium because they're with a different insurance company, which, by the way, is good. That's what we want. It's called competition, right? Then they fight over who's going to get the better deal, who's going to have a better policy, and the carriers will have to keep punching at each other and getting those rates down to be able to get your business. So anyway, what we don't have right now is that. Because your neighbor might be with an insurance company that's not offering new policies right now. So you don't have the ability to go to them and say, hey, I want that policy because it's a third cost of what I'm spending. Fire maps, per se, are not what are creating that problem. Because, again, there is no generic map that everybody follows that every carrier looks at and says, hmm, this is fire. This is not. This is a high risk zone. This is not. Do they look at areas? And a lot of them, they... Feel the same way? Absolutely. Some areas that are in the middle of the hills or in the deep canyons, you or I would look at as well. We would look at it on Google Maps and we would say, yeah, that's a pretty high risk for fire. And most carriers would as well. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the maps that are drawn by each carrier would have the same characteristics on that. They might both decide that it's a high risk, but what does high risk mean, right? We're using terminology that's not insurance related. It's just vocabulary. And insurance carriers are all about actual numbers, right? What is the actual factor that we have? Now, before I go to the next question, we've got a caller that's come in, so let's bring her on. Uh, welcome, thanks for being here. I'm Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. How can I help you? Hey, Carl. So someone suggested something to me that seems too good to be true. So my... It is. Next question. Just kidding. <laughs> My 16-year-old son just got his driver's license, and rather than adding him as a driver on my policy, somebody said, just leave it and then let him use the car when he uses it, and if, God forbid, anything happens, it's no different than if he had just, or anybody had just borrowed my car for the day. Is that a good idea? Wow. Uh you know what? I want to address this in more detail than we have before our next break. So I'm going to ask you to think about one thing while we take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll address it. I ask you, and I can tell by your voice, you don't think that that's terribly, a terribly good idea to do. And, and I think that there's that that's significant. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to tackle this one because it's not something that you are unique to. I've been asked this question before. I've certainly seen it happen before. Let's tackle this when we come back from a quick break. I'm Carl Sussman, and this is Insurance Hour. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.